Hi everybody, welcome to my studio. My name is Lana. I am an acrylic artist. Thank you so much for stopping by today. We're going to paint something that is lots and lots of fun. I've been wanting to paint this for like months. I've had the line drawing ready. I could not wait to paint this. Just other things kept getting ahead of it and uh, so finally I just said I gotta paint this it's just it's what I want to paint today so and that's what I want you to do I want you to paint the things that make you happy that touch your heart that bring you joy well this one was fun for me because I really have been trying to get into more realism painting and uh, learn to teach myself how to paint things more real looking um, that's what's near and dear to my heart so uh, besides painting fruit which is my absolute favorite thing to paint but we're going to be painting this really great design today and I have titled it Touch of Lemon isn't this a great project this cup of tea here and we made a little transparent tea but it's darker down in the bottom of the cup because that's how my tea looks and uh, we've painted a spoon which that metal was I thought it was going to be the most difficult thing for me to paint but it was pretty easy and I think you're going to find it pretty easy too when you're first painting things it's like they're in the ugly stage forever and it's never going to come together but it all comes together and then I added that bouquet effect into the background which really I think brought it up to the next level um, so I I think that you're going to love painting this i have painted it on an eight by eight canvas um, but you can paint it on anything that you like i have used deco art traditions paints one of my absolute favorite paints to use so creamy so luscious artist grade paint it is wonderful paint if you haven't tried it i highly recommend you head over to decoart.com and grab some of their traditions paints and if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, I hope that you will subscribe while you're here. Give me a thumbs up for this video because that all helps me in the YouTube algorithm to grow my channel so I can continue to bring these amazing videos to you. And please hit that notification bell so you know every time I post a new video or every time I go live because I do do lives. So you guys, I hope that you're going to grab your paintbrushes and paint along. So let's gather everything up and let's get painting. right everybody we are starting a brand new painting here today I'm excited for this one I've had this drawn up for weeks waiting to paint this and uh, I cannot wait now this is a line drawing that I drew based on a photo that I saw on Pexels so that link will be included in the packet um, for you um, and uh, this, I, I love this when I saw it I'm gonna change up it just a little bit but um, I loved the photograph so um, yeah it really just kind of spoke to me this is a hot cup of tea with a lemon wedge in it and uh, it's gonna be great now I've uh, got an 8x8 gallery wrapped canvas I have already prepped this canvas I've painted the sides black um, I did apply two coats of a good quality gesso on top of this which this is the one that I used and I used a two inch damp foam roller, applied a coat, let it dry, applied a second coat, and then I lightly sanded the uh, surface of this. I did not put gesso on the sides. There's no need for that. This is where you're painting. This is where you want the, the, the good quality gesso. Um, I just don't think the gesso that comes from the manufacturer is top notch, and I don't like to have to scrub my paint down into a canvas, and um, I just want a nice, smooth, smooth surface. So uh, applying good quality gesso onto your canvas is what I recommend, but you do not have to do it since they are pre-primed um, and ready for you to just start painting on. And um, after I got it all painted, I lightly sanded it with a brown paper bag just to make sure that everything was nice and smooth. And then I transferred on my pattern with some gray graphite. Shiny side goes down, waxy side goes up. Okay, so I've got it on here and I just noticed that I had um, 
a line here I didn't want because I thought I was going to adjust that side, but I liked the way it looked, so we're going to go with it. I'm going to change this up a little bit in the background, um, and since I drew this by hand just looking at the reference photo, I'm sure that my cup is not shaped exactly like that cup. So uh, if you go look at that pi picture and, and it doesn't look like mine, that's because I drew mine just by looking at the photo. So. Um, I got it as close to what I could see in my mind. It doesn't have to be perfect, but all right. So what I'm doing is I am spritzing this side of my canvas with water so I can have clean water to use when I need a drop of water to moisten my paint or I need water on the water edge of my brush for floating. I don't want to go into my water basin because that paint's going to be dirty and uh, I don't want dirty water in my brush if I need clean water. If I don't need clean water, I can go to my, my water basin, that's fine, but uh, mostly I just want clean water when I'm adding water to my brush. Okay, the paints I'm gonna be using are DecoArt Traditions paints. Absolutely love this paint. It is um, artist grade paint, medium body, just luscious, luscious paint. So if you have not tried it you're gonna want to try it because it's my favorite paint of all time I have to say I just absolutely love it okay we're going to um, start working by putting in our undercoats or our base coats uh, whatever you want to call them so I'm gonna grab a two sizes of flat brushes because I want a little bit bigger one when I get to the cup the outside of the cup in the saucer so I don't have to work so hard so I've got a 16 and a 10 here okay we're gonna paint the inside of this part of the cup we're gonna make it a very very soft blue so I'm gonna put some white on my palette and I think I'll use some cerulean blue and put some of that out okay um, for our tea, now this is this is the tea that's deep into the cup, so it's going to be a little darker, this section here, than this section. But we're going to start out with a little bit lighter colors, so I think we'll start out with some raw sienna, and we can build on top of that very easily. And uh, I think that's all we'll get out for now. Okay, so I'm going to start up here on this part of the cup. So I want to make a really, really soft blue color that you can barely tell it's blue. Alright, can you tell that's blue? You can barely see it's blue. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. You can see that's just lightly tinted blue in there. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. You can see on my palette, it is the softest of blues. Okay, that might be just a tad bit too much blue there. Just add a little more white. And we're gonna go right up to that line and to the edge of the cup. Just a very, very soft blue here. I really hope I can do this, this photo justice because I just love this photograph. Okay, so we've got a nice light blue right there. That looks pretty darn good. All right, we're gonna work on our T area. And for now, we're just going to paint it in all the same color. We're not going to worry about um, creating our really dark stuff down there right now. So I'm going to thin some of this. What did I get? Raw sienna. With a little bit of water. And we're going to paint all of this in through here. A little bit more water. And I am going to just go right over my lemon because we want a little bit of this color behind it.
All right, that's a good start to our tea right there. Looking good. All right, I'm going to um, paint the cup and the handle and the saucer now. And we're going to be adding a lot of different colors into this later, but for now, I think we're just going to mix some of our blue and our white together to get a, um, a base color that we can start with. I have a nice blue. Don't want to go over my edge there. I can touch it up though. So you can mix quite a bit of this up you know as you start and paint everything in. I'm just going to brush mix. I'm okay if it doesn't exactly um, look the same. I think I will actually get some aquamarine blue out because that's looking a little bit more I don't know um, baby bluish and that's not the color I want so we're going to try the white and the aquamarine and we'll mix those Get this color to start with. Yeah, that's going to be much better. So I'll go back over and paint that side. I do like how this is coming off of the bottom of the canvas, so we're not really seeing the entire bottom of the cup. I think that really adds to the um, style of photograph that it is. I just absolutely love it. Okay, so the whole entire outside of the cup and the saucer and the handle. We're going to paint this. Um, just mix a nice um, uh, I'm, I don't want to say light, but you want it to be lighter. A lighter color. I really got my brush loaded down with paint here. Way more paint than I need to have in it. Alright, I'm going to try and go back over this and see if I can get it. I probably should have just taken a baby wipe and wiped that paint off. But we'll just go with it. Alright, our handle. I didn't need that bigger brush after all. This brush got it all done. This is the tin. Okay, so I mean that side definitely looks darker, but um, we'll put a second coat on here and maybe get it up to that close to that. That's really the shaded side, so it's okay if it's not quite the same. Such a luscious paint here. I will have to touch up the edge of my canvas. So I'm just quickly going back over this and applying a second coat. Filling in. That's the good thing about this paint. You can just Go, go, go. I'm not going to worry if I get outside my lines because the background will be a solid color when we're done, so it'll look great. Okay, that is looking so good. So, so good. All right, let me clean out my brush here. Um, I think I might have to widen this edge of the cup just a little bit. Let's see. Line goes out a little farther here. This is all shadowed here, but I'll follow my line there a little bit and see if that that makes it look a little bit a little bit more even. So we're looking pretty yummy, I think. All right, I'm going to go on this with a little bit of water and just remove a tiny bit of this in the lemon area. We want that color in there. I just don't want it to completely fill the lemon, you know? 
I want when my yellow comes in that my yellow sets a little more on top. All right, so, so far one brush. Let's grab another brush here, a small round. And that color that I put inside here, I now want to bring around to the edge of the cup. All right, actually before we do that, let's paint our handle in for our spoon. So I'm going to get some, <laughs> I think I'll try phthalo blue, and I'll also need to put some black out. I don't know if phthalo blue is going to give me the color that I want. I'll give it a try. And we'll put some black out. Okay. So I've got my phthalo blue and my black here. And I want to take some phthalo blue. That's a lot white. That's a lot. A little bit of black in there. We're going to make this blue black or blue gray color. So you can see it's just a subtle little bluish gray. I'm going to add more white in there because I want it to be a little bit lighter to start out with. And we're going to put this color on the spoon. And I'm using just a filbert brush, but a flat brush will work. This is just the one I grabbed out of the paint container, or the brush container. And that could be a little bit lighter. So I might come back and put a, a little bit lighter coat on that. But for now, that's going to get us where we need to go. So let's take a round brush. We're going to put this color that we made back here along this edge around the cup. So that was our white. And that was not pure white or my brush had paint in it. I don't know. I'll put some fresh white out. Okay, so that was white with a little bit of our cerulean blue. making this really light blue color and we're just going to go along the edge we've already got our edge pretty much back there I mean we're going to put a darker line in here but we need we need a lighter edge in here before we add our dark one so I'm just going to come along this front of this cup and narrow this a little bit. It got a little bit wide and out of shape. I removed my blue paint there because it wasn't quite dry. So I'll put that back in. Okay, that looks better. Alright, we will definitely be repeating that and adding more to that as soon as it gets a little dry. Okay, so while that is drying, let's grab some... Mm, let's grab burnt sienna. It's still not going to be quite dark enough. I just want to get a little bit of this. Actually, I'm going to dry my 
I, want, I really need that to dry before I can move on. I, I think what I'm going to do is just move down to my cup and saucer and just complete that completely. <laughs> and then we will do the inside of the cup. So let's get this dry. Okay, teacup and saucer. <laughs> I'm getting there. All right, we're going to use some different colors and do some dry brushing, some kind of texturing stuff in here. The first thing that I want to do is take my black paint and I'm gonna thin it down just a little bit. This is the one color that you can actually use your dirty water <laughs> to um, thin down. And we're going to go in here and just kind of dab this and um, put some little, I don't know, paint color in here. This this uh, cup is, <coughs> excuse me, is varying colors and but it's got this dark stuff like down deep in it and I love that. <clears throat> so we're going to go everywhere. We're going to have lots of shadows on this cup but um, some of this that we're putting in right now we'll end up not even seeing when we're done especially on this handle because that's going to be super incredibly dark there so just uh, bounce around your um, cup and saucer and put some of this stuff here and there okay that's going to be all dark over there so we we'll probably won't see that we're going to do a little bit of a wiggly. I think actually I'll add some phthalo blue into this and make it not quite so black. We'll make it a blue black. I believe phthalo is what I added. So, no, I think that might be cobalt. I'm having a hard time seeing which color is which. Um, cobalt blue hue. That's what I've got here. Cobalt blue hue. Okay and so right around the edge here. Like I said, when we get over here, this is going to be dark, but you can start there and this will give you a good um, starting point here. And you're just going to create a little bit of a choppy little not perfect line here going around this. I do want to lighten that other line a little bit and actually we won't really see the white part all the way over here. This is really shadowed over here and up through here. It's it's shadowy. Um, we're just going to see it as we work our way across here with these two colors. All the way to the edge. So we get a nice little I don't want to say choppy but it is kind of wiggly and we just want to make sure we keep the shape of the cup. Keeping the shape quite important. <laughs> quite important. Okay so that is our first little mm, dippy dabs and whatever you want to have on here. As much as you want, as little as you want. Um, it's your cup. Your cup and saucer and you know through here you can put some um, but this is all going to be incredibly dark um, in these areas. We do see quite a bit of it over here, but this is all going to be dark down through here. Okay, so it, it really, uh, our, our cup just looks like it's sick. I mean, it's, it's got some kind of illness that it's all spotted, but that's what we're going for right now. Um, yeah, so that's the dark color that we need right there. Okay, so now that we've got that on there, we're going to take some of our white. And I think I'll just mix it with that cerulean blue and make that light blue kind of mix. This does not have to be perfectly white, but we do want it to be lighter. And we'll put some of these in here, here and there. Just some random places. Some of these we will not end up seeing, especially in shadowy areas. So just put a few here and there. 
Not as much as you did with the black, but we can have some of this kind of going on there. Okay. Just very messily. It's kind of hard to see on top of that color that's on there, but it, um, it's going to get the job done. Okay, and um, let's see. I want to add some just the cobalt blue? No, I don't think so. I think I think those dark ones that we have in there will be good enough. I'm going to take a little bit of this and kind of go up next to my dark line up there. We can darken that line. Alright. That gets us going there. We're getting there. Okay, let's put just a few just straight white ones on here. Um, these will definitely be a little bit more on top. Okay, that's good. That's really all we need to do with that. All right, we're going to start dry brushing some paint on here. Okay, so I'm going to use um, Mazaluna. This is a large size. Um, you can use whatever brush that you want to use. I'm going to grab some white paint and load that brush with some white paint. Really work it into my brush. Come over here on a dry area of my paper towel or grab a dry paper towel and kind of get the really thick stuff that's on there off. And we're just going to start dry brushing this across our um, cup. Definitely want a little bit more paint. There we go. We want to create some streaky stuff going on here. This is mostly going to be on the cup. We can put a little bit down here. We'll wash some color over that later and darken that. Uh, we don't really need any on the handle. It's going to be highlighted right through there, but we're just creating this little bit of a, a dry brush look here on the cup itself. Okay, I'm going to be using this one again, so I don't want to put it into my dark paint. I'm going to use it again here real quick. So I'm going to grab another one. Um, this one I'm going to load with that cobalt blue hue and a little bit of black in there. Really work that in. Grab a dry paper towel, tap some of that off. Now we're going to come from the opposite direction here and begin putting some of this stuff in. This is a darker color, so it's definitely going to show up much more on this. Tap and add some texture. Yeah, I like that. Let's put some of this down here. And some down here. And we're definitely going to put it on the handle. And again, don't worry about going out into your background. That side's all going to be dark. I'm really going to tap some right in there. I want some a few little darker areas to really pop out. Grab a little bit more black into that. And this is where you're, depending on how your canvas is prepped, will depend on how much of it grabs from the brush. So, and how much texture it leaves behind. So we can start putting some of this in here. Now, if you lose your cup shape, you can come back in and draw those lines in. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit more of the black and blue mix. Tap off here. So I don't want bold, stark stuff going on. Just 
a little bit coming from that edge. We're going to add some more of that light back in there. This is all going to be fairly dark over here. Okay, so I'm going to grab one more brush and I'm going to go into my aquamarine and white mix that we base coated it in with. Way too much aquamarine on my brush. Pick that in. This is another one of those little scruffy brushes. And we're going to work some of this in. Maybe. Maybe not. Any of those black spots that we need to bring back on top, we can bring back on top. That's all going to be super, super dark over here. some of this in here. Okay. I know it still looks like a hot mess, but please bear with me. We are going to get where we need to go. Okay, so I think I'm going to be done with this one. I'm going to go ahead and wash it out. And then... Um, I do want to put a little bit of that darker blue-black mix in there. So I'm going to grab that brush. I did not clean it and grab a little bit more blue into my brush. It still had some black in there. And I want to bring a little bit of this into here. And a little bit down into here. And more out in through here, and out through here. This is the blue-black. Okay, so this is just putting some texture on the cup, okay? We're not really shading and base coating and doing all of that stuff with the cup. We're just adding some uh, textury stuff. Okay, so I'm going to be done with my rough brushes. So I can wash them all out, and oh, I'm going to put my lines back on for your benefit so you can see where the edge of the cup is. We're going to start doing some shading on our cup. All right, we're ready to start adding some shading on here. We're going to start on our cup here, and we're going to start with the cobalt blue hue um, and a little tiny bit of black. Oh, that's a lot of black. Maybe quite that much black. You could also use the phthalo blue. I think it would be fine, but this is a little bit darker of a color. And we're going to start on, I put my line back in there. I don't know if you can still see it or not, but we're going to start on this side of the cup and work our way up, all the way up that edge, all the way up. Bring it over a little bit. Don't try not to get it into your <laughs> into your um, T area. So we're starting out our dark area on that side. That will become much much darker than that. We'll also put some of this on the handle here. And we'll put some in through here. This will become really dark in here. Uh, the handle will be darker than the cup just slightly, but um, it will be darker. This is all dark in here. Smooth that out with the water edge. there. And, and this is dark on this edge. And on this 
edge. The handle is going to be mostly dark. It is really, really in the shadows a lot. So um, it will be pretty dark by the time we get done with it. Pretty darn dark. Okay. We'll take that mix that, let me put some more of that cobalt blue hue out. And a little bit of our black. And blend them together. Got that really far over on my brush, so I'm going to wipe it off and reload. So I can keep that just on that edge. And we're going to go along this side of the cup and work this down through here. Okay, it's not going to be quite as dark out on that edge, but it's, it's going to be dark. All right, we're going to keep this a little bit tighter through here. that area. Okay, and we'll have a little bit of this bristle along this edge. Okay. We'll put some out here on this edge as well. It's just not going to be Dark. Okay, so we've developed the edge of the saucer now, <laughs> so that's helpful. Alright, we're going to put some of this down here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Pretty darn good, I must say. So I really want that layer to dry a little bit before we apply a next layer on. I think while that layer is drying, we're going to go to our lemon and add a little wash of yellow on there. And I'm going to use Hansa Yellow Medium. And just make a little wash of it. Remember, this is highly pigmented paint. <laughs> so when you're making a wash, you need really small amounts. Okay, we're going to put this. It's a little bright. So I'll wipe off and just use whatever's left on my brush and just put a little wash of that on there. That's going to get our um, lemon started. And actually, I'm going to see if I can remove. I probably can't because this is probably pretty dry now. I'm going to see if I can remove a little bit of that. I'm going to put some warm white on that edge of the lemon. And we'll have to do that a couple of times to get that a little bit brighter. Um, I think I'll also take that warm white and start creating these little section areas here. Okay. All right. Okay, so the step that I just did with the lemon will actually, in my instructions, will be under the lemon instructions. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to do something while this was drying, so I decided to just go off camera and get it dry so that we could move on. Okay, so we're going to take our blue and our black mix. Really dark this time, so you can add a little bit more black in there and make it a really dark black-blue color. And we're going to darken up our areas. So with this, we're going to darken, and I need way more black in there or something. It's not quite as dark as what I would like it. And we're going to bring it up here. I want to leave a little bit of a light area, 
in through there. But I want all of this to be dark through here. Okay, and we're going to bring this over. We're going to add a little bit of brown on top of there so we can take a little bit of that off. And this top edge here. Okay, we're going to bring this over down here. Okay, we really want this side to be dark. Okay, I need to let that dry, so I'm going to move on to another area. I'm going to go right here and darken this area. This area is not going to come out very far, so don't don't get too carried away with that. We're, we're kind of creating a line of darkness right there. Okay. All right, let's mix a little more. We really want it to lean more towards the black side, but still have that little bit of blue tint to it. So I'm going to go over here and make this darker. Almost this whole side is going to be really dark. We're just going to see. Oops. Wipe my brush off. And then I can just come back in and blend that out a little bit. We're just going to see a little bit of lightness over there. We can add some of this darker stuff along here. Okay, really thin. Don't let it get too wide through there. Now, on our handle, I'm going to move down to a smaller brush. Um, we're obviously going to have to do more on the cup because it definitely needs to come over. It needs to come over about this far to where it's really dark. But let's work on the handle. So, that mix of ooh, too much water in my brush. Black and blue. Now the handle is really dark. It is incredibly dark, dark, dark. It is in the shadow areas. A little bit more black. I want to see more black here than I do blue, but I don't want it to be straight black. We're going to have an area that's right through here that's going to be highlighted. This is all going to be dark back here. Okay, I know we're going to have to do some of these areas a third time, but so this is going to have a little highlight area right through here, and the rest of it's going to be pretty dark. I'm just going to pick up more black because I really want this to be dark. This whole handle right through here. And right through there. here it's going to be light so I'll just remove some of that but that edge out there this very edge is going to be dark okay so just make that edge dark okay I'll go back to my big brush first I want to make sure this is dry here because if I apply water to it it's going to lift it right here I'm going to go with that really dark color, mostly black, a little bit of blue. It still needs to have that little blue tint to it, but I want it to be super dark. Let's bring this over. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush off so I can just 
Move some of that paint. Got a lot of water in my brush here. And we want just a little peak of lightness coming through there. And then the rest of it's really dark. Okay. I'm going to drag a little bit of our, I think I'll go to a smaller brush though, of our, um, what color is this? This aquamarine. I want to put a little bit of this in here, of just the pure aquamarine. Right along this edge. There we go. That's looking better. Okay, we need to add a little bit of brown onto our cup um, out here um, as well as the edge. So while that darkness is getting dry enough for us to maybe add a third layer, we'll see. Um, we definitely need a third layer here and just right there and on the handle because the handle is incredibly dark, super, super dark. Um, let's add a little bit of brownish color on here. Okay, so let's take some burnt sienna. That's the color I want to use. Actually, I might mix raw sienna with it and make it not quite so orangey, but the raw sienna is not quite the color. Well, actually, the raw sienna might be the exact color that I want, so let's go with the raw sienna. Okay, we just want to put a few little places of raw sienna here and there. We can definitely see this in the cup. Of course down in here you're not going to see a lot but go ahead and put some down here because um, we're going to need it down there. Down here again you won't end up seeing a lot of it but and just a couple places here on the handle we'll see some That's about the only places we'll see it on the handle, but yeah. Lots of little dibby dabs here. Okay. That looks pretty good. I like that. Now this same color we're going to start applying to the edge of our um, cup. This is the raw sienna, and so we want a little bit of messy stuff like we did the, we want it straight up there, but as it comes down into that lighter color, it needs to have a little bit of messiness. Okay, we're going to go around the entire top of the cup. Of course, back here it will be a little bit more smooth. We'll have just a light line of this because we're going to come in with a darker color back here. But um, I'll just add some of this in. Here, I'm definitely going to see it through here, and then along the edge here. Okay, so we've got that that line going around right through here. Actually, it should be more on the inside. Not the outside, that's going to be more white out there, or that lighter color. So we can remove that from the outer edge there. We'll come back in with our light color and redefine that. I'm also going to take some black, and I think I'll mix it with some 
<laughs> Let's mix it with some burnt umber because I need it to have a little bit of brown tint to it. So we'll take some black and some burnt umber. Burnt umber in that. So we can have a little bit of a brown black mix here, a little bit of water to thin it. And this is going to start right back here. Somewhere around in here where it's going to start. And definitely need more paint on my brush. gonna go right along that line that we drew in there. It's gonna get a little bit fatter as it comes around here. So we can see more of it and then it will thin out as it comes to right about there. Okay and we're gonna put some of this over here. Edge. I'll give it a little bit of variation through there. A little bit more black in the mix. We want that that line that's. Keep that nice and straight there. Crisp line. Okay, so we're going to come through here. And then this line here is going to come up through here. And we're going to start blending it and tapping and bringing it together up here. a little bit darker along there. Okay, that um, t -t 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 raw sienna, I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt umber to it, make it a little bit more dirty raw sienna, I guess. We'll just start out with that mix so we won't have to come back and do it again. And we gotta come in with some light color here. Take some white. Do I have white? I have warm white. And some raw sienna. Mix that together. And a little bit of cerulean blue. That's going to make two. Uh, I need to get some titanium white out because I need some. Ooh. Okay. Didn't expect that to happen. Alright, so our cerulean and white, where it's mostly white. And we got to put this in here. We may have to come back and add this at the end after we do our background in case we lose some of this. A little bit more on the blue side back here. a little bit more on the blue through this section. The blue and white will come back in with just some white. But um, over here I want it to be more white and raw sienna. Through 
here. Make that a little bit wider. I really want a little bit fatter lip out here. I can't get my paint to flow for nothing here. That looks better. I'm going to widen this a little bit out here, and then I'll come in with some of the lighter color. I might just come in with straight white or warm white, one of the two. some straight white through here. That's the lightest edge of the cup. Um, a little bit through here. I need to fix my brown line through here. smaller brush. That looks very chalky. Just kind of did that again, and uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of dark stuff going on to here. Okay. I'm gonna take my white and that little bit of cerulean blue. See if I can touch up in my light blue area in my cup. Kind of even everything out. Okay. That looks pretty good around the rim of the cup. Uh, I'll probably come back and add a few little brighter highlights on there later, but for now, um, it was the raw umber, uh, burnt sienna and raw umber mixed, some burnt umber and carbon black mixed, and then our blue mix that we did inside. So that's all we did. We just kind of worked it around our cup and got those colors where they need to be. This side of my cup looks very flat. So let's see if we can...
just checking to see where I can adjust a little bit. And create a little bit better edge there. Okay. I think I'm going to leave the edge of the cup for now. Um, I don't want to overwork it and then not be happy with it. So I'm going to leave it until it needs its bridal bright highlights and then we'll see what um, it needs on top of that um, but for now I think that's good I want to finish this side of the cup it needs some highlights on it um, and finish the saucer out all right we're gonna do some white highlights I think on the side of the cup and I'm just going to kind of drag those across just add some a little bit of texture in here I'm definitely going to have to bring that shadow over there a little bit farther down. I think that's probably pretty good on the highlight there. Let me see about bringing that down here just a little bit more. Good. I'm going to grab just a little bit of black in here. I want that dark right, right through there. And we can take this black and also put some more of it on our handle. edge here with some black not too much okay I really think the cup and saucer is coming along we need to finish out the um, edging of the plate like we did up here at the top so I'm gonna take that raw sienna maybe some warm white mix that together Mostly white. Just a tiny bit of raw sienna. And this is going to go along here. It's okay if we get out of lines. <laughs> Gotta paint that background anyway. go over here. This side's not going to get a whole lot of this. Actually, it's not going to get any of it. It's going to get a little wash of our dark blue and a tiny little bit of black in there just to tone it down. Just take a little bit of white while that is wet. Oops. Okay, I didn't want right there. Okay, so that side's gonna stay mostly light. Take some white and go along here. Ooh, it's got a lot of water in my brush. Try that again. Ooh, too much paint. It's a vicious little circle here. I'll tap some of this in. I'm going to wipe my brush and grab raw sienna and tap some of that. I think I'm going to go ahead and put some over here. Even though in the photo it doesn't show any on this side, I just want a little bit over there. 
because um, it doesn't look cohesive without it, I don't think. So we're going to put that over there. Okay, I want a really bright, <coughs> excuse me, highlight right through here. Here, right through there. We definitely want white up through here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some white on there. I left a little line over here. I don't know if you can see it, um, but I think I will bring that up a little bit so that you can maybe get a little glimpse of it. A little reflective light here, maybe. Uh, I'm taking my blue-black mix and adding just a little bit of white or warm white to it, a tiny little bit. follow the shape of the cup. That does not look like it's following the shape of the cup. That looks like it's following the shape of the cup. I don't want it that wide. So, damp brush. Damp brush and you take it back to the thinnest of lines. And then we'll wash over it with some blue. That's a little reflective highlight there. So let me dry that. And I'm just going to wash over it with some of that blue black. It won't cover it completely, but it'll make just a subtle little highlight on there, which is perfect. We're going to work on the T inside of the cup now. Now down in here in the bottom, it's very dark. Um, I think I'm going to try some raw umber. Let's see if I like that. I'm going to put raw umber out and burnt umber and raw sienna. So that was raw umber. So now we have some burnt umber. Put some burnt sienna, which I'm not sure if I'm going to need. And some raw sienna. Okay. So down in the lower part of the tea, this is really dark. So I think I'll use some raw ember because it, it's very very dark so I'm just making a, a little bit of a wash of this color and I'm going to put this down in here for the darkest area of our tea here We still have to do highlights on that handle, uh, but I want to make sure it's good and dry before we do that. Okay. I'm going to wash this brush because 
I want to float. I think I'll actually go to my bigger brush. I'm going to put a little bit of green out because I, I see a little tint of green in that um, T on one edge of it. So I'm going to put sap green out. I'm not sure if this is the color that will be to my liking. I also have phthalo green blue, but I think that's going to be way too bright. So I'm going to take a little bit of that on my brush. Just a little dab will do ya. And we're going to put some of this along this edge over here. This is where I see the green in the tea. So maybe it's a uh, green tea. <laughs> and we'll bring it up through here. It's probably just getting a little bit of some kind of reflection from the blue, but it's making it look green. So we're going to put a little bit of some green in here. And uh, yeah, and then we'll take our raw umber and put some of this over here. Just a little float of it. Don't want it to get too dark. Although this side of the tea is very dark, um, it's really just light right through there. I still want these to. be separated, you know what I mean? And then we'll put a little bit of this down here. And we can go over that green, but very lightly because we might remove it. We'll go over it again here in a little bit. I'm going to try and not get into my blue back there, but if we do, no big deal. I really need to fade that line out a little bit, make it kind of disappear there in the cup. So. Um, if we get into that, it's not a big deal. Um, we can work it out. Um, there's a good start to the inside of our tea there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, I definitely want this to be darker. So I'm going to load up straight raw umber here. And that wasn't quite dry because it's lifting the paint there. some of this. I know I dried this with the heat tool, but it still was lifting there. Bring this over. We're just repeating that color that we did earlier. And then through here. spoon. I do want to go around the spoon though. Okay, we've got a light section right through there and a little bit of lightness right by the spoon so we want to keep that light. Okay. Um, while that's drying, I'm going to move on to something else because I dried that with the heat tool and it still lifted the paint so it wasn't quite as dry as what I would like. I'm going to take my, um, my warm white, I'll spit it out here in a minute, and my Hansa Yellow Medium. And I'm going to take my warm white and go back over this section. I don't want to get this too far painted in in case I get tea all over it, so the outer edge of the lemon rind I'm going to save for later. But right here on the lemon itself, let's see if I can zoom in where you can see what I'm doing here, we're going to create a little bit of a texture because this is not a smooth little line that happens here.
especially when it comes to those areas where it has the sections. Okay, so we've got a little bit of stuff going on there. I'm going to grab a detail liner for that lemon, so it's going to need to be a pretty thin brush. Let's see if I got one that's not all worn out here. And we're going to take our warm white. We'll start with warm white. We'll, we'll move up to titanium white, but this gives us a good start. And if you can see, I'm making just some little wiggly lines in here. You probably can't see those at all. It's the pulp and the... I'll just go ahead and put some white out and um, use some of our yellow here in a second. Now some of our yellow we want to just darken up a few places on our lemon. This is not lemons are not this particular lemon in this photograph is not bright at all so I might add a little bit of raw sienna and really tone that down because it is it is not a bright lemon although it's looking pretty bright there okay let's use some white maybe we can see those little lines in there a little bit better with some white. I can just go any direction. They're just coming down from that edge, which we will lighten up. This is the white. The um, warm white wouldn't show up. going to need more than that in there but that's that's getting us started on it because um, we need to do that yellow around the outside so it's kind of hard to uh, to get that where it needs to be when I can't do the rest of it right now okay back to our tea I want to make sure that is definitely dry I'm going to put some black out because that really needs to be almost black down in there Make sure it's cool. It needs to be cool, cool, cool before you start painting on it. I think this is turning out absolutely adorable. All right, we're going to take our raw umber and some black. And put a little bit more of that on my brush. This down in here really needs to be incredibly dark. Over here on the side definitely needs to be darker. So this is black and raw umber mixed together. Mix a little bit more here. These almost want to blend out together right here where they meet and kind of fade away. So a little bit darker tea. bring this over this way a little bit. We do want it to be lighter through here, but um, we can definitely put some in there. And then over here it needs to be darker. There. Just 
kind of around that spoon. Maybe not up quite so high right there. Just keep that pretty small there. And I think I'll take some of the raw sienna and put some of that in here because tea has a little bit of a red tint to it. We'll just wash some of that in there. Actually, we need some of it back here too. All that needs to get really dry before we can move on. Okay, down in the cup, there's a little bit of reflective light in the tea. So we want to add that now before we add more layers onto our tea. So I'm gonna take my round brush and I'm gonna take some burnt, uh, burnt sienna and some white and mix those together. And I make this light orangey color and we're going to put some dots we're going to see if we can see these actually we're going to have to add a lot more white in there maybe some raw raw sienna will help lighten that a little bit this is like reflective light down in the bottom of the cup Okay, just a few little dots in there. We're going to add a little bit back here and a little bit through here. Now as we add our washes of color on here, this will all um, kind of fade down in there. Those are some light areas. We've got some that are out here on the edge of the the water line as well. We can go ahead and add those, but I don't think that they're going to show up as well. Add a little bit more white in there. Um, we'll come back if they don't if they don't stay where we can see them after we put a couple more layers on here. Then we'll definitely um, come back in and add those back in. Okay, we got to make sure those are good and dry. Actually, these down in the water could stand to be a little bit brighter, so I'm going to grab a little bit more white and brighten those up because we're going to be putting some some uh, washes of color on there. We want to make sure that those don't completely disappear might make one of them a little bit bigger. We don't want those to be bright white when we get done painting. We want them to look like they're reflections in the tea. So um, doing them now before we add more washes of color on here is going to help a lot. This area right through here needs to be much darker. That's really hot, so i got to wait for that to cool. And then I need to blend my green and my brown there a little bit better. Uh, we're almost done with the tea. It's looking pretty good. Okay, we're going to do another wash of the burnt sienna into our tea we're just going to cover all of our tea with this wash I don't want to lose that green so color there so I'll wipe that off. Go over your highlights that you put on here. Okay so we can still see that little bit of light back in there. 
And this is kind of bringing the tea more together. Okay, I want to take my um, mix that I put in the back, which is cerulean and white, and clean up a little bit on this side so it's white and just a little tiny bit of that cerulean. Any place that you feel along your T-line that you need to clean it up, go ahead and do that. I want it to all look nice and smooth. I'm going to put a little wash of, oh, let's try burnt umber. Just side loading my brush. Actually, I want to make sure this is good and dry first. Side loading. I really want that to kind of, that line to fade a little bit. So I think on one side I'm going to do that blue and white mix. On the other side I'm going to do a little bit of, let's do burnt umber. CNA into that because I feel like I've got white all the way across on my brush here. I really want this to blend. That is not working for me. I'm going to wash my brush because I feel like the white has taken over. So let me try that again. drying out. It's starting to make me upset. I need some of that burnt umber, but it is not wanting to cooperate. Still isn't looking how I want it to look. Ugh. I want that color coming up there. Okay, I don't like how that looks. I mean, that's very similar to how it looks in the photograph, but I don't like it at all. it at all. So we're just going to take that off. Okay, we're just going to leave it the way it is. Let's put our little highlights back on there. Because they kind of faded away, so we're going to use white and raw sienna. See one place on my cup that I don't like how it's shaped. Take that blue and white mix right through here. I'm not 
sure that helped. Okay, I think I'm going to leave the tea right there. Uh, that final little wash of, a wide angle out because that will help you see it a little bit better. That um, final little wash of um, burnt sienna, I think, was just enough for that. So we're going to leave that there. Let's go work on the spoon next. So I think we'll just go ahead and finish the lemon since we've got it almost done. So I'm going to take my yellow and some raw um, sienna, mix them together, and then we're going to create the outer edge of the rind by tapping this all along here. You want the, like we did on the cup, the outside edge to be straight, but then as you come in on the rind, it can be varying, um, jaggedness, I guess. Okay. Clean my brush off. I'm going to grab some white. And we're going to put some white on here. I'm going to take some of it out into the yellow rind. If your yellow rind is too dark, and wash over it with some of the hands of yellow and then we'll put a few more squiggly lines and we need to darken up just slightly So this is raw sienna, and I'm just going to put it next to the white on the rind and next to that little um, section line that comes down. And this is a very thin wash of this color. Okay, well, it, it doesn't show this in the picture, in the photo, but let me wide angle out. I really feel like right there needs a little bit of a shadow. So let's dry this and we'll make a little shadow on here with we'll some raw sienna. Very sheer layer of paint here. Ooh, that's a lot. Every time I wipe my brush off on my paper towel, I'm picking up paint. Just a light, light, light color of raw sienna. Right there, next to the cup. Don't make it too dark. It'll, it'll just um, overpower everything. But just enough that you can see that and it's a little separated or pulled away from the Still, I'm seeing. Ooh. Right back there. Okay, that definitely looks better. Okay, time for the spoon. I think the lemon is done. Okay, before we move on, I really need to add the highlight on the cup handle. I'm going to grab a small flat brush. Okay, so um, on the handle, we're going to have a bright little highlight. Let me get some of my aquamarine out. So we're going to mix aquamarine and white, it might be warm white, 
So we'll just mostly the light color. Aquamarine and some white. And we're just going to place this up here. This is where our highlight is. A little bit here. Along that edge. And then we're going to have some here. A little bit there. And along this edge. Okay, and that was with a mix of aquamarine and warm white or white, either one. I think I used both. So whatever uh, works for you. We're going to dry that. I want to take my um, aquamarine and I'm going to add a little tiny bit of black to it. Kind of make it a dirty aquamarine and a little bit of white or warm white either one just want to dirty it up and we're going to put that on here kind of tone that a little bit not make it bold bold bright yet uh, we are going to make it a little bit brighter That's getting our brightness on there. And that handle could actually be much darker than it is. Definitely want it darker here. So let's just put a bright little highlight on there. Um, we're going to use the aquamarine and white. Mostly white here. Tap some there. This is incredibly bright right here. Highlight right there. And right through there. Okay, I'm going to break this up. It's too solid. So I'm going to break it up with some black. little highlights on there. We have a little bit of the raw sienna back up in there. And I'm just going to come back with a little dab of some white some raw sienna on my brush and it's kind of mixing in there. Okay. This one right here needs to be incredibly bright. Okay, I think that will finish the handle. Um, just using the aquamarine, mixing a little bit of white with it for our first layer, then washing over aquamarine and black mixed, and then dapping a little bit of just bright white on top of that. All right, so for our spoon, let's see what we're going to need here. We're going to obviously need our uh, probably uh, cerulean blue. Um, I think that's what I'll use with a little bit of black. Um, and some white black and white mix so let's start with let me put some more white out we're 
We're going to take our white and our black and make a gray. I'm going to make a nice little amount of it. And I'm going to add a little bit of cerulean in there to tone it to the spoon color. Let's see if this is going to show up. I don't even know if it's going to show up on here. Nope. More, more black. A little bit more blue in there. Alright, we're just going to create some little dabby stuff on here. We've got kind of an edge that comes right through here. No, it doesn't come right through there. There's one that comes here along the edge of the spoon. first. It kind of fades away somewhere in there. Then we've got one up here. I'll probably want to make this darker. Use a darker color here, but we'll get a good start. It's going to be darker up here. So I'm just going to dab some of that up there. And then start dippy dabbing. Over our little spoon handle. This will all work its way underneath everything. I'm going to wipe my brush off and grab a little bit more blue into that. I want some blue ones. I just added a little bit more cerulean blue to it, it was all I did. So we just start with the gray mix, which was black, white, and a little cerulean blue, and then we just added more blue to it. And now we're just dabbing some blue ones in there, so that's how we're going to start it. I'm going to wash my brush off and do some white on here. I'm going to pull some white right through there on this edge of the spoon. I'm going to keep it straight along this edge. I don't know if this is going to look any... Oh, picked up gray. I don't know if this is going to look anything like a spoon, but... I'm giving it my best shot here. This is like a really bright highlight over here on this edge of the spoon. I put some down this edge. This is white. Quite a few coming over in here. Does it look like a spoon yet? I don't know. It's up in the air. Okay, that was with white. A little bit darker color, so I'm going to take the black 
and the cerulean. Add a little water to it so it will flow from my brush. I need this. <laughs> more water, more paint. Alright, let me try this again. I want some dark stuff going on here. that in completely black so I mean it's dark just don't want it completely dark a little bit of blue Back in there. let's see I'll take my white edge just a little bit. I'll get a little bit more white in there because that got a little whiter than what I wanted right there. I want that to be extremely thin. And a little, oh, okay, a lot. I need that a little bit of darker color. Not super dark, but I need some darker right through here. small angle brush here. I'm going to do that mix of um, the white and the black. A little bit of black and a little bit of blue. Cerulean blue. light blue gray mix. I don't know if this is going to be dark enough. I might have to. Actually that's just too too opaque. So I think we'll just use the um, cerulean and a little bit of black and really thin that down with water. No white. And I don't want to cover up all of our little dibby dabs that we did. So this is just a little wash of that gray-blue color on there. I'm going to do it again. Make it just a little bit darker. I had to bring my highlights back in here. Right, that was a float of the just lamp black and or lamp black carbon black and cerulean blue. That's all I used. Just thin enough. We can still see a little bit of our dab things in there, but it didn't cover everything completely. And I did it twice. 
Okay, so now I just want to place my bright highlight back in here, which is along here. And up to here. Oh. Up gray, I don't want gray in there. Just the white. Actually, I'm going to take a little detail liner. Just to work for me today for nothing. A little bit of that color back in there. And then we'll go back to our white. White up there. I'm going to bring white down to here and then I'm going to bring my damp brush. and kind of soften that out. Make sure it's bright over here and down here. And I think that might finish out our spoon. Big old bright highlight on there. That, that was big. A little bit up there at the top. I'm touch those with my finger, kind of settle them down in there. I think we'll leave the spoon there for now. I may want to come back and add a little bit more to that um, and make it a little bit more bright. I do want to add a little bit of light gray down in through here. And we definitely want to make sure that the color from the tea is coming around and up on the spoon. So we'll just make sure it's encompassing that spoon well. And make it look like it's down in that T. Okay, I think I'm going to leave the spoon right there. We're going to put out a good amount of carbon black. We are going to paint the entire background with black. And then we're going to do something to the background here. So just grab a nice big brush and start painting in your background. We'll probably take two coats. So Apply your coats easily. Go around all of your elements. Try not to get on top of them. You could paint this in before you start painting your cup. You could leave your background white. You could paint it a different color. Stenciling on it, but I'm going to do some stuff to the background. So we're just going to go around everything with our black. And it may or may not take two coats depending on what paint you're using and how well your canvas is taking the paint. Just make sure you don't paint over the edges of stuff that you want to keep. Okay, I'm going to go inside here. I might have way too big of a brush for this. Smaller brush in these smaller areas. 
And this is the tightest areas over here on this side, so. Alright, so I'm just going to go off camera and finish this because it's all just painting in the background. Just make sure you know where the edge of everything is so you don't accidentally paint over something. You see how dark that handle is? It really should fade into the background quite a bit. Okay, so I'll go off camera and finish painting in my background, and then we'll come back. Okay, I've got my background painted in. It is completely dry. I have also applied two coats of soft touch varnish on it. It is a matte varnish, so it doesn't create any shine on here, but I can paint directly on top of it. So if what I'm doing next I don't like, I can simply wipe it off with a baby wipe. So I've cut out my shape that I painted here and I'm going to spray the back of it with some water to help it stick to the canvas without lifting and just, I'm just going to lay it down right over my area that I painted. It's mostly this side over here that I'm going to be working on. Okay, so I just want it to lay down as flat as possible. Now I'm going to be using a um, circle template for some of it and for some of it I am not. We're going to do a bokeh effect in the background. This is totally optional. You do not have to do this. I want to do it in some uh, muted, some muted, some bright colors. So I've got yellow oxide and our Hansa yellow medium that we used in the design. And I've also got some naphthol red. I don't know if I'm going to use it. I can get it to come out of the bottle. Um, we can use one of our blues. Uh, cerulean blue will probably show up on top of the black. If not, the aquamarine will. So I'll put out both of those. And then we used some green in our project, so let's put some of that green out and some raw sienna. So these are the colors I'm going to make some lights with and some white. I'll need some white out. And we can use either warm white or titanium white. It doesn't matter. I'll put them both out. We'll have all these colors out. Now, you can use um, a little scruffy brush to start out with, a stencil brush. Let me grab a stencil brush. <clears throat> I'll grab several here in case I want to change colors a lot. So I'm going to start out and just add a few. I, I don't want to get incredibly carried away with uh, lights back in here. Um, but I do want some that are kind of blurred out behind. So um, I think I'll start with the yellow oxide. I'm going to work that into my brush. And I do want to have a dry brush here in case I need it. I'm going to work that in. And like I said, if I don't like this, I can wash it off very easily. And I'm going to start by creating a little blurred out uh, light way back there. Now, you can make these shaped like a Christmas tree, which is what I originally thought I would do. Um, you can just make varying lights, like they're sitting at a window, um, looking out to the window and seeing what's going on and remember they can be all different sizes now this um, this yellow on the background here does tend to, to change a little bit green so you could go over it a couple of times and make it more yellow 
really depends on the look you're going for. Okay, so that's that yellow oxide. So now we're going to go into our Hansa Yellow. I just wiped the paint out of my brush. Again, this will probably turn green on that black background. Wipe my brush off so I can blur this out. I'm going to make a few of these. If I want this to stay more yellow, I need to add some white to it. But I want some of this stuff in the background back here. That is not, you know, it's it's not um, prominent, I guess I, I should say. Okay, I think that's probably okay for that color. So um, now I want to make a little bit brighter ones. Um, I think I'll take my white and my yellow. I'm just going to mix white with the yellow that's in my brush. And we'll just go from there and start creating a few brighter, but still blurred out stuff back here. Make them all different sizes. We're coming more forward with our, our stuff now. This is still blurred out stuff here. I'm going to blur this one a little bit more. Okay. I think I'll grab some red and yellow and make an orange color. And some white. And we'll put some orange ones in here. paint on my brush. It's quite a bit. And these are orange. Just a slight little orange color. Again, vary your sizes. Move it around your piece. And be creative with it. Anything you end up not liking, come back with your black paint and cover it up. Okay, let's do a little bit of green. So I'll mix some white in with that. We've got kind of a green color on here already, so I may only do a couple of these. Just a couple, because we already got green on there. So let's take our turquoise and some white. And this is a much brighter color here. So this, this color is going to start standing a little more on top. this color so I'm going to add a little bit more of it than I did some of our other colors. Oops. My paper moved so it's already starting to dry out so I want to make sure I hold it on there. All right, wipe my brush out. Um, I think we've done all the colors here so I'm going to go to a small stencil brush so I can make some few white ones. Ooh, okay, that's that's bright. So it's like some blurred out lights back there and I actually might come in and shape this more like a a Christmas tree. Um, I think I would probably like that better. And that one got really, really, really bright. So I think what I'll come in here, let me keep this one rotating, 
I'm going to add some bright ones. I'm going to do warm white for my ones that stand on top. These will be really, really bright and they're going to be on top. And just put them anywhere and everywhere. You can go in and wash over these with some of your colors. Uh, when you're done, if you want to. I love doing this bouquet technique. I just think it is so much fun. I'm really going to cover up that one that I didn't like there. overlap these. They do not have to stay individual on their own. Actually looks much better when you do overlap them. Ideally, I could have cut that out and done some back behind there, but um, I didn't. So we're just going to go with what we got. And I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking that. That looks really, really good. So I don't think I'm going to add any more in there. I'm going to keep it just like that. And uh, I think I might call this one a done project. I am very, very happy with it. I'm glad I added that little bit of color with my bouquet in the background and then added my bright white on top. I think that just made a huge difference. I love doing that bouquet effect and adding it into the background of stuff. So um, I think I might add one more on here, over here. All right, you guys, I think that's going to finish this one. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Please, 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 please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys so much. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please share my videos because I want you all out there painting with me. I love this project. I hope that you have enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see you paint it. I'll see you guys on the next one, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Okay, one thing I forgot to do on here... <laughs> Before I said goodbye, let's make a wash of some gray, and we're going to make some little steam coming out of this. It's very, very soft gray color. This is completely an optional step because if it's something you feel like you you can't um, quite accomplish, I'm going to put a little bit more white in there so we can see it a little bit better down in, in the T area. We really want the steam to look like it's coming off of the I don't want to get too much on here. Of course, I've got that um, that varnish on here, so I can take this off and play around with it till I like it. 
I think up in here, I want a little bit more. White. here it needs to be a little bit lighter not quite so dark some of this steam stuff. I don't want it completely thick and covered in there. So I want it more random. So that makes it look a little more steamy coming off of it, I think. Like I said, because I've varnished this, I can keep removing and adding and playing with it as much as I want to. So there we go. I like that so much better. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for painting with me. I hope you have enjoyed this one. Please give me a thumbs up, like, share, and comment, especially that thumbs up and subscribe. That helps me out right here on YouTube. And I want to keep bringing these amazing videos and classes to you. So please help me out there you guys and I cannot wait to see you on the next one. I hope that you have enjoyed this one and that you enjoy painting it. I'll see you on the next one everybody. Bye bye.